I will now elaborate more on the important topic of zolpidem-induced sleepwalking and sleep-related eating disorder. Now, together with my colleagues both at the Sleep Center and the Psychiatry Clinic at Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis, we published a series of 19 cases of zolpidem-induced amnestic sleep-related eating disorder in 2005. And this was during a two-year period during routine clinical work. 11 of these patients were in the psychiatry clinic and 8 were in our sleep disorders clinic. And 7 had zolpidem-induced amnestic non-eating parasomnia sleepwalking, but 19 cases of sleep-related eating disorder. 84% were females. The mean age was 47 years, and the range was very impressive, extending from 17 years to 78 years. So again, a female predominant disorder, either with idiopathic sleep-related eating disorder or with zolpidem-induced sleep-related eating disorder. 84% had recent and or current major depression. 89.5% were taking antidepressant drugs when zolpidem had induced a sleep-related eating disorder. And the majority of patients were taking other drugs for various psychiatric and medical disorders. No patient had a past history of sleep-related eating disorder. Very few of these patients had a past history of sleepwalking or other parasomnia. All patients had persistent insomnia. 42.1% had more than one other sleep disorder involving obstructive sleep apnea in three, narcolepsy in two, and uh, one each for sleepwalking, restless leg syndrome, REM sleep behavior disorder, and delayed sleep phase syndrome, but no prior history of sleep-related eating disorder. Zolpidem appears to be the most common drug that can induce amnestic sleep-related eating disorder. Nevertheless, only a small percent of patients treated with zolpidem will develop sleep-related eating disorder. Zopiclone, Zopiclone, and Zaloplon that are similar to Zopidem apparently did not have similar effects. Also, two patients started kitchen fires related to Zopidem. Two had sleep driving. Both cases of sleep driving occurred when the patients took the Zopidem as prescribed at home. These are the most vulnerable patients, the most complex cases. Females with insomnia taking 10 to 20 milligrams of Zopidem and taking medications for major depression and other psychiatric sleep or medical disorders. In other words, complex patients with complex pharmacology. The more likely zolpidem will induce sleep-related eating disorder or sleep driving and other amnestic non-REM parasomnias. Therefore, physicians should alert patients about this possible side effect when prescribing zolpidem and certainly alert the bed partner. And if someone sleeps alone, consider putting in a door alarm to fully awaken them if they seem to sleepwalk during the night and want to get out of their own bedroom. The good news is that cessation of zolpidem promptly stopped the sleep-related eating disorder in all 19 patients. In the journal Sleep Medicine X 2020, there was an important article entitled Sleep-Related Eating Disorder Associated with Zolpidem, Cases Compiled from a Literature Review. So the authors did an extensive database search both in English and in Spanish. They found 40 cases involving 65% females, mean age 53 years. The onset of sleep-related eating disorder occurred with nightly doses of zolpidem of greater than 10 milligrams. There should be a theme that's obvious to all of us by now. A dose of zolpidem more than 10 milligrams at bedtime is inviting trouble, basically. The onset of sleep-related eating disorder came with the first dose or even as late as nine years after use. So that's an important factor to keep in mind. There was also comorbid sleep and psychiatric disorders involving obstructive sleep apnea in 35% of these patients, restless leg syndrome in 25% of the patients, and clinical depression in 32% of these cases. However, control of these comorbid sleep and psychiatric disorders did not prevent this opidem-induced sleep-related eating disorder. That's an important point to consider. And here's another study, Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, 2016, Prevalence and Factors Associated with Sleep-Related Eating Disorder in Psychiatric Outpatients Taking Hypnotics. This was a Japanese study from Tokyo, a cross-sectional questionnaire study. They found 8.4% sleep-related eating disorder in this questionnaire study, significantly younger patients, higher PSQI scores, and took significantly higher bedtime diazepam equivalent doses of hypnotics compared to patients who did not develop sleep-related eating disorder. Also, taking two or more antipsychotics was an additional risk factor. Now, there's another study entitled Zolpidem for Insomnia, 
a double-edged sword, a systematic literature review on zolpidem-induced complex sleep behaviors, published in the Indian Journal of Psychological Medicine 2021. Again, there was an extensive literature search, database search, on the internet, looking for any type of complex sleep behaviors associated with zolpidem. They identified 148 patients, and the most common complex sleep behavior reported was sleepwalking and sleep-related eating disorder. This is repeating what we've known, but with more data. There was an 88% probability association of complex sleep behaviors associated with zolpidem use. And there were three observational case series that found a 4.7% incidence, 69 out of 1,454 patients with zolpidem-associated complex sleep behaviors. There is now an FDA black box warning dated April 30th, 2019 concerning complex sleep behaviors and insomnia medications. And this is what the FDA wrote, quote, side effects may include dangerous behaviors done while sleeping, such as eating, walking, driving, engaging in a range of activities in your sleep that can lead to injury or death. According to the FDA, a personal history of sleep-related eating disorder is a contraindication to zolpidem use, and a family history of sleep-related eating disorder is a relative contraindication. So you need to get a family history for parasomnia in addition to a personal history of parasomnia in patients for whom you are thinking of prescribing zolpidem. So key points. Zolpidem can induce de novo sleep-related eating disorder. Also, Females with insomnia taking higher doses, in other words, 10 milligrams or more of zolpidem and taking other psychotropic medications appear to be in the most vulnerable patients for developing sleep-related eating disorder. The risk of zolpidem-associated or zolpidem-induced sleep-related eating disorder increases with complex clinical scenarios involving psychiatric disorders, taking concurrent psychotropic medications, obstructive sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, and other clinical conditions. And since April 30th, 2019, there has been an FDA, quote, black box warning, end quote, in regards to complex sleep behaviors induced by insomnia medications. You need to get a family history for parasomnia in addition to a personal history of parasomnia in patients for whom you are thinking of prescribing zolpidem.